Hello everyone, I'm Nabil Murad. In this training video, I'm going to show you how to create a searchable drop list for a slicer. So in my example, I have a source data in another worksheet where I have four columns. I have a name column, a region, a payment method, and an amount. And I created two pivot tables starting from this source list. So I have the two pivot tables hidden behind the two charts. So if I move the charts away, you can see the pivot table. And here is the second pivot table, sum of amount per region, sum of amount per payment method. And I represented the first one by a column chart. I represented the second one by a line chart. And then I positioned my charts on top of the pivot tables. And I created a slicer. If I select any option from the slicer, it controls both pivot tables tables and it's dynamic but the issue is I have lots of options in my slicer so instead of using the scroll bar up and down I created another functionality which is a searchable drop list so if I click on this little arrow so it displays a long list for the different options of course I can deselect all and then I can check any one of these options but instead of doing this I can shrink my search by typing few search characters so if I type DAV I see only options for David so I can hit OK and now I see the different options for David I can clear my filter by clicking clicking on the funnel icon in the upper right corner and I can click on the down arrow and search for a different term let's say I'm looking for char so when I type char I see the option that I want and when I hit OK it's reflected and the filter is applied it's reflected on my pivot table it's reflected on my pivot charts let's see how we build this project from ground up in Excel this is my start file I have the same exact list and I'll start by creating two pivot tables in a new worksheet. I select a single cell. I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon. To the left side of the Insert tab, I click on Pivot Table. I want to create my pivot table in a new worksheet, so I hit OK. In this pivot table, I'll be summarizing the amount by region. So I drag the region to the rows drop area. Immediately, Excel populates a unique list of regions. And then I drag the amount to the values area, and my pivot table is created. Let's improve the appearance of this pivot table. First of all, let's format the numbers. I select any single cell, and then right click. And from the right click menu, I select number format. And in the number format, I want to apply an accounting format. And although I'm selecting one single cell, but because I'm I'm using the proper functionality the entire column is formatted let's bring a label region here and I can do that by typing but better than typing I can simply change the layout by going to the design tab of the ribbon and say I want to change the report layout I'll make it in tabular form and here it brings the label the final thing I would like to do is to apply a style so I click on the down arrow for styles and let's apply a style I created my first pivot table. I would like to create a second pivot table that shows the sum of the amount for each payment method. I could do that by recreating the pivot table, and I could do it as well by copying the same exact pivot table. So I select it and then press Control and drag while pressing Control to create a second version of the same pivot table. I can modify this pivot table, I can change its style, and then I can adjust the column width. I'm selecting the two columns and then double click on the border to adjust it to the best fit. Then when I click on the pivot table, I can bring the field list one more time and replace the region by payment I do that by going to the analyze tab of the ribbon and then click on field list and when I click on field list I don't want the region this time I would like the payment so I drag the payment to the rose drop area after creating my two pivot tables I'll be creating two pivot charts so I select the numbers for the first pivot table and then on the right side of the analyze tab I click on pivot chart I would like to create this simple column chart I selected and then hit OK let's modify the elements of our pivot chart let's say I don't want to see the vertical axis, so I select it and then hit delete. I don't want to see these horizontal grid lines, so I click on them and when they are selected I hit delete on my keyboard. I don't want to see the legend, so I select it and then hit delete. My chart grows bigger. And finally, I don't want to see these filter buttons, so I go to the analyze tab of the ribbon 
click on the down arrow of field buttons and select hide all and now my chart looks a little better let's add a title here at the top so I select total and I can type sales by region I could go to the home tab and format it I'll make it bold I'll make it dark blue I can also improve the appearance of my chart by clicking on one of the columns all the columns will be selected so I'll open the format data series pane by hitting the shortcut control 1 and when it opens I'm going to reduce the gaps between the different columns so I drag the slider a little bit to the left now the gaps between the different columns are much reduced one more thing I would like to do is to change the color of each one of these columns and to change the color I have to go to this bucket icon when you give it a click I want to change the fill color of each column so I click on the little triangle for fill and then I go down to very color by points so when I check it each column appears in a different color the final thing I would like to do is to apply a bevel effect so I go to the format tab and then for the shape effects I click on the down arrow select bevel and then bevel the different shape should you wish to improve the appearance of the horizontal the X axis the category axis you click on it and then you go on the home tab and then you bold it and you can change its color or bump it up if you wish now I finished formatting this chart so I'm going to drag it and position it on top of the first pivot table let's create the second chart and the second chart will be a line chart to represent the sum of amount for each payment method so I select the different numbers from the second pivot table and then I click on the analyze tab of the ribbon click on pivot chart and from here I'll be selecting a line chart let's select the one with markers that's a nice one and then I hit OK as we did with the first pivot table we'll improve the appearance very quickly I'll get rid of this vertical axis the value axis by hitting delete and then I don't want the horizontal grid lines so I select them and delete them and then I don't want the legend I delete it as well and let's say we don't want these mm, filter buttons so I go to the analyze tab click on field buttons and then select hide all now my chart is a little better I can reduce the height of my chart I can select the horizontal axis the category axis and then I can bold it to match the other one so I'll go to the home tab and bump it up and then make it bold so both of them will look exactly the same we need some data here on top of each one of the line markers so I click on the little plus sign the chart elements in the upper right corner of my chart and when I click on the chart elements I select data labels and click on the little triangle to the right side of data labels and then go to the bottom of this list and select more data label options when I select more data label options the sum of the amount appears but what I would like to do is to hide the decimal points I don't want decimal points so in this case I click on the label option and when I click on label option I expand the number option so I click on the little triangle to the left side of number and then from here I want to change what I have I want to change it let's say to currency because these are numbers and I'll go to the format code I would like to delete the two decimal places and then hit add and that will be reflected on my line chart now I can close the format data label series if you wish to bold the numbers you can do that by clicking on bold on the home tab of the ribbon you can also add a title so I'm selecting the title and I type amount by payment method I select the title and I can bold it and make it blue to match the other one now I created the second pivot chart and I'm going to move it and position it on top of the pivot table the final thing I would like to do before creating my slicer is to create a third pivot table that will be hidden somewhere in the interface so let me expand these columns a little bit and I'm going to expand these columns and I'll be creating a pivot table somewhere here 
And to create a pivot table, I'll be using the same exact source, so I'll go to the data and then click on the Insert tab of the ribbon and then click on Pivot Table. I want to create this one in an existing worksheet, so I select Existing, put my blinking cursor in the Location box, and then go to Sheet 2, and I would like to create my pivot table, let's say, in this cell, cell P1. And then I hit OK. So the pivot table placeholder should have been created, and here it is. And all what I'm going to do is to drag the name and drop it in the filter area. And that's all what I need from the third pivot table. I need to change some options, because this is just a filter. And this filter should control the other pivot tables. So what I'm going to do, number one, is to select the cell having the filter, and then I click on Pivot Table Options. I can click on Pivot Table Options by selecting the down arrow for Options, or I can simply right-click and select Pivot Table Options, and here it opens the Pivot Table Options dialog box. I'm going to take the check away from Autofit Column Width on Update, because the column width will change according to the size of data available in this column. I don't want it to change, and accordingly it will change the size of my slicer, so I'm taking the check away from autofit column width on update, and then I hit OK. I created this pivot table, and I would like to create a slicer for this pivot table. Actually, the slicer will be only controlling this pivot table, but I'm going to link it to the other pivot tables as well. Let's see how we do this. To create a slicer, I go to the Analyze tab of the ribbon, and then click on Insert Slicer. What slicer would you like to create? Well, we know that a slicer is a graphic interactive filter, so I'll be creating a slicer for the name, and then I hit OK. Here is my slicer. I can drag it. I can position it wherever I want. I can also resize it if I wish. I'm going to apply a style to my slicer, and here is the style that I apply to my slicer. I make it a little bit shorter, and then when I select any option in this slicer, I have two issues. Number one, the name appears to the right side, outside the box. I don't want that name to appear, and at the same time, it doesn't control anything in the other pivot tables. Let's fix all that. First of all, I'm going to create a simple conditional formatting rule that hides the contents. So I'm selecting these three cells where I could read the name, and then I go to conditional formatting, and I say new rule, and I say I want to use a formula. In this formula, I simply say if this cell and then I unlock it by hitting F4 three times, so it becomes a relative cell reference. The conditional formatting rule will travel in memory in each one of these three cells. And I say if it's not equal, greater than, smaller than, to blank, which is the current situation, what would you like to do? I would like to format the font as white. When I hit OK twice, the conditional formatting rule is triggered, and you can't see the text anymore. So I drag my pivot slicer, and I position it here, and I'm going to release it by clicking on the funnel in the upper right corner. One more thing I would like to do before testing it on my other pivot tables, I would like to link it to the other pivot tables. I could do that by right-clicking and selecting Report Connection, or I can go to the Options tab of the Slicer tools, and I do have the Report Connection functionality as well. So whether you click it in the right-click menu or you click it on the Options tab, it will open a dialog box where you will see the different pivot tables. What would you like to do? Well, I have a checkbox to Pivot Table 3, which is the one upon which the slicer is based, but I want it to control the other pivot tables as well, so I'm going to check the other pivot tables and then hit OK. Now we should be ready to go. I'm going to test my slicer, so if I check one of the options, look at that, the pivot chart, the line chart, the column chart, everything changes, and accordingly, the underlying pivot tables change as well. If I select a different option, I can select whatever I want. I can select multiple options by pressing Control. I can even release my slicer. But what I would like to do, I want to get the advantage of my searchable drop list. Now, if I click on the little down arrow, 
look what happens I see a drop list I can search for a name so if I start typing DAV so I'm shrinking my list and I can see only options for David and then I hit OK and that is reflected automatically on my pivot charts and on my pivot table if I release my filter and then let's check it one more time click on the down arrow and then I'm going to type AIL. Now I see Eileen only. If I hit OK, it's easier for me to find my options when I have lots of options in a long slicer or in a long drop list. So by having a searchable slicer drop list, I'm able to control my dashboard. I'm able to control my pivot tables, whatever the number of pivot tables you have. If you enjoyed this training video, like, comment, share and subscribe thank you for watching see you in our next training video